Today's joyride, I want to talk about something that all of us have, all of us actually struggle with. All of us have one or some or more of these in our lives. And for some, there's some unique ones, which is just unique to us, and others are universal things that we're going to talk about today that affect all of us. But everybody struggles with at least one of these things in their lives, things we're going to talk about. So if you're going to take a joyride with Jesus, you've got to identify these in your life so you can protect your Self. What are we going to talk about today? Joy killers. Come on, would you just say that out loud? Joy killers. Joy killers, joy killers are things that rob or steal our joy. And here's the thing. There are some that we have that a lot of people have. There's some that are just individualized to us. So let me give you some several. Let me give you several joy killers that are universal okay cross everybody so if you kind of connect with this or you believe this is really a joy killer just say what what all right here we go holding a grudge is that a joy killer of course it is i mean if you're holding a grudge the bible says there's a root that's being formed in you that causes bitterness how about jealousy i gotta see what they have and then all of a sudden you realize oh it's stealing my joy because i don't got what they got how about anger? Okay, I was a little weak on that one. Some of you struggle with anger, apparently, because you're like, I don't want to admit it in church. How about grumbling and complaining? Oh, we got a little louder on that one. Frustrations? Broken relationships? We're slowly increasing. I don't know what's going on here. How about unplanned obstacles like 2020? Like literally what you see happen is people allow what happens to them to influence what God is doing within them. Gossip. Oh yeah, that was like, I ain't saying that. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Is that just going to prove I'm a gossip? A critical spirit. That's the person that's always negative about everybody else. They're attacking everybody, going after everybody. A short-term vision. They only see right here. They don't see further out there. And then here's what I think we can all connect with. Too much news. Oh, come on now. I thought we'd get a little louder than that on too much news. I mean, there is way too much negative news out there, isn't there? I think there's a point where that could kill our joy if we allow it to get within our spirit. See, those are the joy killers that are universal, but then there's unique ones. So here's what I want to do. I want to be brutally transparent with you guys today. So I'm going to share with you my top three joy killers. Things that rob Todd's joy, okay? Uh, Pastor Mary helped me out with these because I was having a hard time thinking about it because a lot of things can steal my joy. But these are my top three. All right, here they are. Ready? Number one, religious people. <laughs> I mean, this is a tough group for me. I love everyone, but this group I love a little less. These are the people that can tell you everything that's wrong in your life but they got everything jacked up in their life. They're the ones that look good on Sunday and they live like hell on Monday. They make you all feel like you're less than and they puff themselves up. So religious people drive me insane. They actually kill my joy. Health issues, number two. I have struggled since I was 10 or 11 years old, maybe 12, with digestive issues my whole life. Always discomfort in the stomach. All these things agitate me. I got tons of food allergies, all the things going on. And when sometimes, oh, I got a pain here. Oh, what is it? What is it? Any hypochondriacs here? Like you get a pain and the next thing you know, you think it's worse than it really is? Come on now. Am I the only one? Like you get up one day and you're like, oh my gosh, my, my arm's not, oh my gosh. Call 911. I'm having a heart attack. It's the big one. I'm coming to see you. Come on, anybody remember Red Fox? Come on now. Come on, who was he calling for? What was the name? Elizabeth! And yet, you just fell asleep on your arm and it fell asleep. Come on now. Health issues. You can steal my joy sometimes if I allow it to. And then the last one's laziness. Whoa, oh, hello. I mean, laziness. I mean, lazy people drive me crazy. Lazy people want everything and they don't do anything to get it. I mean, think about this. I mean, it bothers me to hear a 57-year-old complain about their busy life when they're still living at home working a part-time job. 
Come on now. I'm just saying there's got to be a point where don't complain about your life. Take control of your life. Get out there and do what God's called you to do, but don't be lazy. That's why our staff works so hard, because we're not going to tolerate laziness. You're lazy, you won't be here for long. That was your, you're welcome, staff. Just give you a... How many of you enjoyed my singing last week? Anybody hear my singing? Come on now, some of you are just being... It's great. Well, I want to introduce you to another song, all right? Another song. Some of you, maybe you grew up in church, you heard this song. Um, I grew up hearing this song all the time. It went something like this. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. The world didn't give it and the world can't take it away. Anybody remember that song? Okay, only three people. Thank you for joining me. <laughs> See, I've got to recognize that God gives real joy. And there's a difference between happiness and joy. Happiness is what happens around you. Joy is what God is doing within you. And when God gives me joy, the world can't take it away. November 3rd cannot steal my joy. Come on now, somebody. This life cannot steal my joy. If this life steals my joy, I really didn't have much joy. Now, Jesus, he's teaching his disciples. He's comparing himself to the vine. He says, God the Father's, uh, he is the gardener, and we're the branches. He said, as long as the branches, which is us, is connected or are connected to the vine, you'll bear fruit, and you allow the gardener to prune your life. When you do this and you produce fruit that lasts, Jesus finishes with this statement. I have told you these things, so you, be, you will be filled with my joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. Come on now. He said, if you stay connected to me, you will have joy that overflows and spills over into every area of your life. Now, I think the problem is this pandemic disconnected some of us from the vine. So all of a sudden now, pandemic, disconnect. Oh, man, it's terrible. The world's going to end. The killer hornets aren't here. The plague is here. There's a second wave. It's going to be a dark winter. I'm not receiving a dark winter. I'm believing that God is going to put his healing provision around his church, and he's going to protect his house. That's what I'm believing for. So all of a sudden, he's saying, like, listen, if you want real joy, stay connected. Stay connected to me. God wants you to be full of joy, and some of you need to hear that today. Because some of us get, feel guilty when we're happy. When we have a little bit of joy, we're thinking, man, but look at what the world's going through. God wants you to be full of joy. Some of you are more full of it than joy. And it's time that we get an injection of joy today. Come on now. Church, am I talking real talk today? Some of us were complaining and remaining instead of growing and going. God wants us to be full of some outrageous, contagious joy. How many of you remember when you were a child? Some of you, it's much closer in time. But I remember when I was a kid, I, I remember about seven or eight years old, I would go in and I'd preach to my G.I. Joe guys. I felt like God called me to preach very young. I ran from God for a little bit. But I felt like I would go into my basement at 792 Rod Road in Alden, New York, right near Buffalo. And I'd go in and I'd line up all my G.I. Joe guys and I'd preach to them. And I'd preach the paint off the walls. In fact, every time I preached to my G.I. Joe guys, every one of them got saved. You want to know why? I gave the invitation. If you'd like to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior of life, would you raise your hand? Then I went around and raised all their hands. <laughs> Best responses ever to my messages. But I remember preaching, I mean, I love it, just jung around, I just knew little verses, and I'd go in on them, and then I'd go away, and my mother thought it was the cutest thing in the world, and although she didn't take any pictures. So I don't have any evidence, so you just got to trust me, and so I preached to them. And then one day, a friend of mine came over, and he told me, I was telling him, I'm just preaching to my G.I. Joe guys. He goes, those ain't G.I. Joe guys. I said, what do you mean these ain't? They're military guys. These are G.I. Joe guys. Now remember, some of you know I grew up poor. My mother couldn't afford G.I. Joe's, so she got me G.I. Blows. They weren't the real thing. I was so happy and content preaching to what I thought was G.I. Joe guys until someone said, those ain't the real thing. My focus shifted, and then it became comparison. 
I thought this was happiness until someone said there's something better out there. And then all of a sudden I was like, I want the G.I. Joes. I want the real. And I think for some of us, we've been following the fake so long, we don't even know what the real looks like. We couldn't identify it when it comes. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to go back to your childhood for some of you and remember the day you had real joy. That you didn't have any, any, anything that was taking the joy out of your life like responsibility. Responsibility can be a joy killer, can it? I was like, I got to run here. I got to do this. I got to go here. I want to go back sometimes to preach into these inanimate objects because some of them actually look better than some of you right now. I'm just saying. Like, I mean, they have smiles. Some of you are like, talking about happiness again. And I go back to that. Why? Because when I look back at where I came from, oh, man, I started preaching to inanimate objects that were dead. Today, I get to preach to living people. My God has taken me a long way since Buffalo, New York. There's got to be a point we look back and we say, man, look at what God has done. You see, I had joy until someone told me that wasn't happy enough. I think some of us, we play that game of compare, and when you compare, you always despair. You always feel like, man, someone's got something better. Someone's got a bigger platform. You don't want their platform. You don't know the price they paid to get to that platform. You never know what someone had to go through to get where they are. See, I believe everyone on the planet is trying to find real joy. They're trying to find it in something. Let me tell you, you can't find, dr- uh, you can't find joy in drugs. You can't find joy in liquor. You can't find joy in premarital sex or extramarital sex. You can only find joy in a real relationship with Jesus Christ. We need to connect ourselves again to the vine because we're only just the branch. And then allow God to prune our lives. Real joy can only be found complete in Christ. So occasionally I have to go back to Two Rod Road in Alden, New York, and remind myself where I came from and what God has done in my life. Because sometimes, you know, being a pastor can be draining. I'll be honest, sometimes greeting people after church can be draining. Because you never know what someone's going to tell you when you go to say hi. I'm just, I can't keep the joy. Well, I got to tell you, Pastor, about it. And you're like, and I have to sing this song. I have to sing the song we sang earlier, but a little different version. This joy that I have, the church didn't give it to me. This joy that I have, this church didn't give it to me. This joy that I have. The church didn't give it to me. The church didn't give it, and the church can't take it away. See, at some point, I got to say, the church doesn't bring me joy. Jesus brings me joy. And so even when there's difficulty in a church or struggle or conversation, they're like, oh, Jesus, religious people again, please help me. It's like this church didn't give me joy. So I'm not going to let the church rob my joy. Does that make sense? Or even like a few years ago, I had a new car. I had to start... I had a Cadillac. I got a Cadillac. Come on now. You know you grew up when you got a Cadillac. Then all of a sudden, you know what happened? I started looking around. The Cadillac I have, every time I see somebody get out of it, they're over 70 years old. I'm like, I'm way too cool to be in this Cadillac. I got to do something different. But then I have to sing it this way. This car that I have, or this joy that I have, this car didn't give it to me. This joy that I have, this car didn't give it to me. And then you go through all the things you go through. How about... For me, it was here, preaching these guys in the beginning when no one would applaud you. And now after a sermon, oh, that was a great message. You know what I have to remind myself? This joy that I have, the applause didn't give it to me. This joy that I have, the applause didn't give it to me. This joy that I have, the applause didn't give it to me. The applause didn't give it, and the applause can't take it away. And then when I get frustrated, because I get frustrated a lot, and I get frustrated with people. I love people. My job will be great if it weren't for people. When I get frustrated with people, you know what? This joy that I have, the people didn't give it to me. You can go through this whole thing and realize the only place real joy comes from is the Lord. It comes from God. 
And so I want to share with you some practical ways today to how to protect your joy. Everybody say, protect your joy. Number one way you can protect your joy is understand this. Joy is not a feeling, it is a focus. Joy is not a feeling, it is a focus. Somebody needs to hear this today. Because I think some of us have allowed our joy to be as, I, I get so emotional. And I get this. No, joy is not an emotion, it's not a feeling, it's a decision, it's a focus. I'm going to focus on this. See, when I first had my G.I. Joe guys... Joy was there. I was focused on this until someone said, there's more. My focus got adjusted. See, the world cannot tell you where joy comes from. Come on now. There is nothing on planet Earth that can bring you real joy. It brings you happiness, and that's short term. Jesus brings you long-lasting, everlasting joy. He's the only one who can do it. The Bible says it this way, always be full of joy. Say that, always be full of joy. Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. There's got to be a point where you say, where does my joy come from? He says, always be full of joy in the Lord. Not joy in the government. Not joy in politics. Not joy in education, not joy in a person. Always be full of joy in the Lord. Now, I want to go deep really quick, all right? So track with me here. The word joy in this verse is kairo. Everybody say that, kairo. Kairo, it means glad for his grace. That changes your perspective of the verse, doesn't it? Always be glad for the grace of God. Come on, anybody thankful you're not what you used to be, but you still ain't yet what you're destined to be? Is anybody thrilled knowing that God who began a good work in me will be faithful to complete? Anybody glad for some full redemptive potential? I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. That is the power of joy. Because joy is about being glad for the grace of God in our lives. Bible saying is you can always find joy when you just focus on his grace come on now how many of you could stand today and say man it's not it's only through the grace of God I'm standing today because of God's grace I have my job today because of God's grace I married the person I married because of yes God's grace come on now it's God's grace I didn't earn it I don't deserve it but he gives it anyway. Come on, church. That's the grace of God. That's why you find joy. Joy is not a feeling. It is a focus. What are you focusing on? If you're focusing on the wrong things, you'll lose your happy. But if you focus on Jesus, you will find real, lasting joy. I've seen God's grace on my life. I remember those days. And I'm grateful for the beginning, the humble beginnings. And I'm grateful for where God's taken my life. Because it's not me, it's all him. See, when you see God's grace on your life, you have to understand you cannot make long-term decisions on short-term feeling. I want to catch this. I want you to catch this. You cannot make long-term decisions on short-term feeling. You cannot make long-term decisions in the middle of a pandemic when you feel down. We're going to change everything. No one, nothing's going back to normal till 2029. Not happening. I'm believing and declaring that God's going to turn this thing around quicker than that. That God's going to get us to where he's designed us to be. But I'm not going to make a decision based on a feeling because most decisions I base on a feeling are usually wrong. It's got to be based on the word of God. Focus on God's grace and you always see joy. Next, you have to know this. Second way you can protect yourself from joy killers. Understand, joy is not internal or external. It comes from the eternal. Okay? The Bible declares this, Nehemiah 8.10, the joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of the Lord. It's not the joy of possessions. It's not the joy of popularity. It's not the joy of paper. It's not the joy of politics. Come on, somebody. It's not the joy of your position, but the joy of a person called Jesus. See, if I base my joy on inside, 
that if something goes wrong inside, I lose my joy. If I base my joy on what's happening around me, when what's happening around me is not good, I lose my joy. But when I base my joy on the person who stands over me, my joy is complete, my joy is full, and his joy becomes my strength. Would you say this after me? Say this after me. Life will make you sad. Oh, come on, let's do that again. Life will make you sad, but God will make you glad. Come on, do you believe that, church? Do you believe that even though life has some difficulties and challenges, God could turn it all around? Let's be reminded today of where our joy comes from. Sometimes I got to go back and remember the humble beginning. I got to remember those moments where we lived off government-issued peanut butter. Only to find out years later, I was allergic to peanut butter. Thank you, God, for your protection. I got to go back, and I got to remember the times when we did not have food in our refrigerator. I remember one Wednesday night, I remember we get home from church. Always went to church. Even if it was the last leg of gas my mother had, always went to church. We went to church to come home. We had no dinner. Nothing in the fridge. Remember, a knock came at the door. It was a lady by the name of Sheila. We opened the door. She had five bags of groceries. She handed my mother two $100 bills. You know what I realized? Sheila didn't feed us that night. God sent Sheila. That night, God put food in our refrigerator. Sometimes you have to go back and remember where God brought you from. And now today, my fridge is full. Come on now. That's the blessings of God. So how you start is not how you're going to finish, but how you carry yourself from start to finish is going to be how people judge your life. Make sure you carry yourself well. Smile when everyone else is crumbling around you because your joy doesn't come from your circumstances. My mother used to always say, you're the happiest kid on the planet. Happiest kid on the planet. And we grew up in poverty. Why? Because we weren't looking to stuff for joy. My mother taught us to look to our Savior for joy. Because if we look to our Savior, you can have joy in every situation. Max Lucado said this, no one can take away your joy because no one can take away your Jesus. Nobody can take it away. See, the joy that comes from within that can be destroyed, but the joy that comes from above lasts for a lifetime. James said it this way. He said, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, when you face trials of many kinds. He goes on to say, that it produces your endurance. Find joy in knowing that what life brings you to, God will always bring you through. He didn't say consider the trials pure joy. He said consider the product that will be produced and you can find joy. You can celebrate the grace of God in your life. Third way you can protect yourself from joy killers, and this is an important one, you gotta guard from digital joy. Clicks, likes, and shares how many reposts did i get today too many people live vicariously through social media is that not true i mean literally social media is everything today it's become the news broadcast it's become fake news broadcast it's become everything people put everything out there i mean i struggle sometimes too come on now let's be honest there's times all of a sudden i find myself like you're thinking you just around there two minutes. Next thing you know, it's like 25 minutes later. You're like, why? My brain, I lost brain cells on social media. We've got to guard against it. And I think what happens, some people get more consumed with taking a picture than enjoying the moment they're in. I got to get the picture. Wait, everybody freeze. No, no, your eyes are closed. Do it again. 25 stinking pictures later, everyone lost their joy. Come on, has that ever happened to anybody? You're like, seriously? Just post a stupid picture. And then you realize it's, it's not even that real moment that was captured. Your brain is a supercomputer that captures every moment in your mind. But yet what we're doing is we're allowing this to do it for us. Instead of just enjoying the moment you're in. Don't worry about snapping that picture. Enjoy it. Forget the post. Forget posting about it and just enjoy the moment. Enjoy that time. Enjoy the people you are with because if the digital gives you joy, the digital can take it away. Jesus said, no one can take the joy away that he gives you. Nobody. But you can forfeit it. 
You can give up your joy. See, there's way too many people consume, consumed with their social media popularity instead of their position in Christ. I mean, I don't know how many, oh, who's going to be the next TikTok star? I don't even care. Who's going to be the next person? doesn't matter because all that stuff is an illusion. Guard yourself against digital joy. I mean, don't let face crook, I mean, Facebook or Instasham, Instagram rob you of your joy. Stay complete in Christ. See, if the digital can set your joy, the digital can steal your joy. If you allow it to set it, it will steal it. Because if all you do is like likes and clicks and shares, the next thing you'll feel, when you don't get that, your joy comes down. Here it is. Number four, way you can protect yourself from joy killers, and this is a big one. Don't fight battles that do not matter. Don't fight battles. You got to walk away from petty debates. Come on now. Bible says it this way. Avoiding a fight is a mark of honor. Boy, our world needs that one. Only fools insist on quarreling. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. But I got to tell them how I feel. No, you do not. I got to respond. I don't agree with their post. Who cares? But I got, I just got those Democrats, those Republicans, those Libertarians. What about those, in the, those conservatives, those liberals? Who cares? Why do I have to fight? The Bible says avoiding it is a mark of honor. Do you know what it says? Read the scripture in the inverse. That means if you like fighting, you dishonor. And God cannot honor dishonor. So let me say this. This is a big week for America. I don't ever want to see one of our people in our church, be honest, it'll be raw and real. If you wake up November 4th and you're depressed because of who got elected, you are putting your joy in a person, not a king. Just back. Oh my gosh! I can't believe Trump got four more years. I can't believe they put Biden in. That's not where my joy comes from. Come on now. My joy doesn't, the joy ride with Jesus does not come from po politics. It comes from Christ. And I think the church has been engaging in this rhetoric since however long it's been, and we have not been about the mission we're called to be, and that's reaching people with God's amazing love. So I don't want to see, oh man, November 3rd, the day America died. No, it was the day your joy was revealed. I just think some of us, we put so much stock in this. Listen, Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. So I can't put stock into who gets elected or who doesn't, whether it's at the highest office or some of the other offices that are being elected right now. I, yes, we should vote, right? Let's be responsible. Let's vote for the person who most aligns with biblical values as best we can, okay? But that does not mean, let me tell you something, and I'm going to say something really bold. If President Trump gets reelected, I will stand up here next Sunday and I will pray over our president. If President Biden becomes, or Vice President Biden becomes our next president, I will stand up here and I will pray for our president. Why? Because the Bible says to pray for those who are in authority. It may or may not be the person I vote for. Irrelevant. I'm not going to lose my joy because the person I voted for didn't get into office. I don't put my joy in a president. I put it in a king. And so why are we going to get bent out of shape? So church, let's be the ones that are marked with honor. Even in the middle of election year. Let's be the ones that don't go after fights. Let's be the ones that are peacekeepers. Peace givers and peace bringers. Stop attacking others' opinions. Oh, I gotta let them know how I feel. No, you don't. Just shut your mouth. Come on, let's be honest. Come on now. You're entitled to your opinion, but you also have a responsibility sometimes to keep it to yourself. I have a lot of opinions. Let me tell you, I see posts 
that our church puts out there that I know are anti-biblical that I know dishonor the heart of God and I don't go after people in our church do you still love me? okay some of you thank you I appreciate that stop criticizing other people's beliefs they might not be as far along in their faith journey as you are give, pe give patience to people give people the same grace that God gave you and you will see people much differently why are you fighting with somebody on social media that has no bearing on your life why are you wasting your time with a hater just move on they will have no effect on your every day and yet you allow them to come in here and if you allow them to come in here they will destroy your peace right here come on church our number one priority is not who gets elected president our number one priority is who gets connected to Jesus that's our number one priority <laughs> avoiding a fight is a mark of honor choose the honor because God always honors honor so if I bring the honor God will lift me up and then finally get around some joy fillers we believe in being hope dealers right we want to be faith carriers, but we also want to be joy fillers. And there's two types of people in the world today. First are drainers. Second is sustainers. Drainers suck the life out of you. They're like the vacuum cleaner for everybody else. I'm just, and your joy is gone because they're just sucking up all your joy. You can walk in happy, and the next thing you know, you see this person, it's like... Sustainers are not the ones that suck the joy out of you. They're the ones that sow joy into you. The more people that are happy and joyous in life that are around you, you'll find yourself more happy. You'll find life just a little bit lighter. You'll enjoy every moment. See, if you have more drainers in your life than sustainers, you'll always feel drained because the chief objective of drainers is to drain your life so their life feels better going to suck the joy out of everyone else because I don't like the life I'm living. So I'll make you feel as bad as I feel. We don't need any more spiritual hoovers. We need some people that are going to inject joy into people. Surround yourself with happy people. Get around people that are happy 24-7, 365. Reminds me of this joke. What do you call an angry pea? Grumpy. I thought that was pretty good. You got to run from grumpy people. Run from them. If someone's miserable, come on, you know you already do it. You see that one person, oh man. I hope they don't see it. I'll be honest. If I'm at Aldi, I see somebody from church that's miserable. I'm like, oh my gosh, I hope they don't see me. <laughs> Check out. Now, you could be going to Lytle, Little, Light, whatever you call that store now. You go there, and if, but if I see someone that's filled with joy, I'm, like, I'm going to run in their car. Oh my gosh, so good to bump into you here. I'm going to find a way to that person. We got to be those kind of people, right? That people are trying to find their way to us. Because when they leave a conversation with us, they feel a little bit better. They feel a little bit more joy. Get around some joy feel fillers. They're going to help fill you with some outrageous, contagious joy. Because it's time to take a joy ride with the right people. And if you're finding you're not happy, maybe you need to change your circle. Maybe you need to get around some different people in your life. Because joy is not a feeling, it's a focus. If 2020 stole your joy, your joy was in the wrong place. Joy comes from the eternal one. It's not based on what's happening around you. It's truly based on who's over you. And if Jesus is Lord of your life, you ought to have joy. So some of you right now, my G.I. Joe fake guys look smart, happier than you guys do. So just smile. Release some endorphins right now. Some syrup, Come on, let it out. Just smile. Some of you still ain't doing it. Like, there it is. Okay, thank you. Sometimes you just got to smile because the joy of the Lord is your strength. Even in the middle of difficulty, you got to guard against digital joy. It's a fraud. Don't believe what you see on social media. Come on now. Anybody get miserable? 
how in the world did that person go to Aruba? I know they didn't quarantine when they got back. Well, let them know how I feel. It's easy to allow it to steal your joy, right? Don't fight battles that don't matter. When we wake up November 4th, the king is still on the throne. And then make sure you're around joy fillers, like Church Unleashed people. Come on, we're the craziest, happiest people on the planet. Because we know where our joy comes from. It doesn't come from within, it doesn't come from without, it comes from above. That's the beauty of our relationship with Jesus. He fills us with outrageous, contagious joy. How many of you are ready to eliminate some joy killers from your life? Just ready to just evict them from your life? You're not going to run with that? That anymore. Would you close your eyes as we pray today?